Hey guys, Christina here with Ask a Hygienist. I'm still a little bit nasally getting over my cold, but I'm really excited because today I'm gonna to be reviewing a couple of electric toothbrushes that somebody requested I review, namely the Bruch electric toothbrush and the Gobi electric toothbrush. Super excited for this. So what you can expect in this review is I'm basically gonna go over things like cost, uh, mode of action, and then also go over my personal experience with both of them and which one I would prefer to use on a regular basis. So I will start off with the Bruch. This guy right here. Ugh. So the Bruch comes in a box like this. And I'm not gonna do one of those fancy unboxing things. I already unboxed it and I took the contents out. And the contents are, well, the brush with the brush head, as well as two extra brush heads, as well as a case, and then a charger as well with the, an adapter. So pretty simple. You just hook the um, USB into the adapter and then your brush just sits right on this little Thing like that. Ta-da! So some basic information about the brush. So the brush comes in three different colors, black as you can see here, as well as white and a dusty pink. The cost for this toothbrush kind of varies. So if you get it with a subscription, it's $79 and then you get three brush heads with the subscription every six months for $18. Now if you want to buy just the toothbrush itself without a subscription, just a one-time purchase, it is $99 for the brush and the entire kit basically. Now a couple of other things, this brush comes with a 90 day return policy. So if for any reason you're not excited about it and you just don't want to use it anymore, send it back within 90 days and they give you your money back. It also comes with a two year warranty. So if there are any issues with the brush within two years, send it back and they send you a replacement. All right, a couple of things about the brush itself. So it comes with six different settings. Uh, there's the daily, the white, the gentle, gum, max, and tongue. That's pretty cool, you got six different options how you wanna use it. The battery also lasts four weeks. That's a nice feature, especially if you're traveling, although these days, Anyway, a four week long battery life is always a plus, right? So now on to my personal use with this toothbrush. Now the way this toothbrush works is with sonic vibrations, similar to the Sonicare, for example. So keep that in mind. And then before I get into my personal use with this brush, I just wanna mention right off the bat, one thing I really liked about this brush immediately was the softness of the bristles. Usually with the more popular brands of electric toothbrushes, my biggest concern is the brush bristles are too hard. In fact, the leading brands of electric toothbrush use medium bristle stiffness, and this just feels a little bit softer. So yeah, big plus there because one of the biggest problems I come across with patients using electric brushes is it wears down enamel or causes gum recession very quickly because it's so abrasive. Alrighty, so on to my personal use with this brush. So just as a reminder, I personally am more of a manual toothbrush kind of gal. And whenever I have used the electric toothbrush, it's always been a rotating type of brush. So when I started using Using this it was extremely ticklish like especially on the palate side on the inside of my teeth there so not a very pleasant experience I really wanted to get up toward the gums but it was hard because it was very ticklish but my husband told me he'd experienced that using his sonic toothbrush before and he's gotten used to it so I'm assuming that if I were to use this on a regular basis I would get over that now the other thing too is I did mention that there are six different settings here. I ended up using just the gentle one because in my personal opinion, what really gets the job done is proper technique and proper duration. So not 30 seconds and not scrubbing all over. In case you guys need a refresher, I made a video on how to use an electric toothbrush properly. It's video number five on my channel. So yeah, I just ended up using the gentle cycle. The gentle cycle. What is this, like a laundry machine? The gentle mode, and that was sufficient for me. Now, I was curious, how well does this actually remove plaque from my teeth? So what I did was a little experiment. I didn't brush my teeth for the whole day, and then at the end of the day, I brushed with the Bruch electric toothbrush, 
And then I used a disclosing tablet. Oh, I forgot to grab one to show you guys. Well, it's like this big and it's a pink tablet. You can get it on Amazon. In fact, I would really recommend the disclosing tablet as an educational tool for your kids or even for yourself. So anyway, I used this tablet, I chewed it up, kind of spread it with my tongue around my teeth, and then I checked out where I was missing some spots. Here is the plaque that was left on my teeth. Now remember, all the darker pink spots is plaque left over. Now you guys are probably thinking like, oh my goodness, this brush doesn't work at all. Look at all that dark pink stuff on the laterals there. Side note, little caveat, you guys have to remember that I am in Invisalign right now. I'm not wearing my trays, I should be. But I have little attachments on my teeth and so all of the little concavities and convexities, it's hard for a toothbrush to get around there. You can see on my two central front teeth though that um, the plaque is pretty much gone. But yeah, I was a little bit bummed out that it didn't get all the way around all my attachments. So I went in with my trusty manual toothbrush and after I brushed with that, here were the final results. So there's that. Now keep all that in mind and let's go over the Gobi toothbrush. So here are some basic facts about the Gobi toothbrush. The Gobi toothbrush comes in a variety of colors and materials. The very basic one is a classic blue, I think. Similar kind of silicone -y material on the sides and then plastic on the front and back here. So the basic electric brush kit goes for $50 with a subscription. Um, and the subscription is basically you get one brush head sent to you every two months um, and each brush head is six dollars. In case you guys don't want to do the math, it's exactly the same price as the Bruch electric toothbrush in terms of how many brush heads you get for the amount of money, the amount of time. Just a little bit of a different setup in that the Gobi toothbrush, they send you only one brush head every two months, and with the Bruch, they send you three brush heads every six months. So kind of all in one bulk situation. Now, if you're not interested in the subscription, you can get this brush as a one-time purchase for $65. And I don't think I went over everything that comes in the kit, so let me do that. So obviously the kit comes with the brush handle and one brush head as well as a little stand to hold the brush in because it's not flat on the bottom here so you just put it in here as well as a charger that comes in the back here like this and the adapter that hooks into this so again basic toothbrush $50 with the subscription I did a little bit of math here as well compared to the Bruch kit this kit only comes with one brush head, right? So if I add $12 to the Gobi toothbrush for the two extra heads that come with the Bruch, that would make it about 62 bucks for the kit versus 79 for the Bruch. Now also in terms of the cost discrepancy, I would say this kit does not come with a travel case. So maybe there's a couple of bucks there causing the discrepancy in price as well as on the Gobi toothbrush, there are only two settings. So it comes in a regular speed and a gentle speed, and that's pretty much it. Now, if you ask me, that actually doesn't bother me. I'm more of a simple gal and I just use one setting, the gentler setting. On any electric toothbrush, I always pick the gentler setting. And remember, what's more important than all the different settings provided is your technique. Now, I did mention that the Gobi comes in a bunch of different colors and stuff. There's a next tier up where the toothbrush is one solid color like black or I don't remember what the other color was white probably and that would be $60 with the subscription or 75 with the one-time purchase and then lastly the third tier of Gobi toothbrush is the metallic ones where um, it just looks a little bit fancier the front um, and the back I think are a metal material but those run for 80 bucks a kit with a subscription 95 for a one-time purchase like I said already I am a simple gal give me the cheapest color option and I'm okay with that funny enough last time I checked the $50 brush kit was out of stock so if you were to buy one right now you'd probably be looking at the next tier up which is the $60 with a subscription so compared to the Bruch, again, reminder, the Bruch came with a 90-day money-back guarantee. The Gobi comes with a 60-day um, return policy. If you don't like it, within 60 days, return it, money back. Now, if some of you guys are like, oh my goodness, 30-day difference, of course I want the Bruch. If you haven't figured out whether or not you like a brush within two months, 
your loss. Uh, now the Gobi does come with a lifetime guarantee. I've reached out to Gobi, haven't heard back from them yet what exactly that means because if there's one thing I learned from life is you gotta read the small script on any of those warranties and stuff, especially when buying a car. You know, it says like 10 year warranty and then you come into the auto shop and they're like, oh, that's normal wear and tear. I'm like what? Anyway, so if and when I hear back from Gobi about their lifetime guarantee claim, I will pin a comment um, below this video to explain what that means. So. Personal use with the Gobi. Compared to the brush, the Gobi is a rotating type electric toothbrush, meaning instead of the sonic vibrations, it actually just kind of rotates. For me, when I use this brush, my gums are a lot less ticklish. So that was a plus for me because I was able to actually brush along the gum line without getting too sensitive or ticklish. Now the other thing I forgot to mention was both of these brushes have a quad timer type thing where the brush times you for 30 seconds per quadrant and when it's time to move on to the next section it kind of stops and then starts buzzing again. Now pretty big difference for me that was kind of a selling point between the two brushes is when I used the Bruch toothbrush, okay let me back it up, when I use an electric toothbrush, I don't know about you guys but I salivate a lot and I can't just brush my teeth for two minutes straight. I have to pause, turn off my brush, spit, resume. I have to take breaks. So when I used the Bruch toothbrush, I noticed that whenever I would pause and I would resume, the timer would start from the very beginning. So a whole another 30 seconds. So if I'm about halfway through a quadrant and then I pause to spit and I turn it back on, it starts all over from 30 seconds. So I kind of had to estimate, you know, oh, okay, I feel like that was uh, the rest of the 15 seconds time to move on. With the Gobi toothbrush, it actually kept the timer on pause, if you will. So if I was brushing one quadrant and then I had to stop midway and spit, when I resume, it brushes only for the remainder of that quadrant time, if that makes sense. So I found that, like I said, a big selling point for me because I'm just kind of anal and I like to know exactly the amount of time I need to brush per quadrant, but I also need to spit quite frequently. So that was a nice feature with the Gobi. I wonder if it's an easy fix, if Bruce were able to um, adjust their timer with that that would be nice. So I did the same exact experiment that I did with the brush um, in terms of the disclosing solution and here are the results. So again as you can see there is a little bit of leftover plaque, the darker pink stuff, around my attachments on my lateral teeth. But now I want to compare side by side the brush versus Gobi with the disclosing tablet there. So I don't know if you can see the difference but when I was taking a closer look at the photos as well as at my teeth, I noticed that I was able to clean around the attachments a little bit better with the Gobi toothbrush. Now, after using the Gobi, I went back again with my trusty manual toothbrush and I just brushed like I would normally with a manual toothbrush and here were the results afterwards. Now, I know some of you folks are probably thinking, okay, well, obviously you have the disclosing solution, so you knew where to brush extra hard. I probably did that the first time with the brush, but the second time around, I figured I might have been more inclined to focus on my lateral teeth. So I pretended like I didn't have any disclosing solution and just brushed straight from the beginning for two minutes, just as I would. So let's do a comparison of the manual toothbrush use after the brush and after the Gobi. So obviously I didn't get all the plaque off the second time around, but that's because I was trying to intentionally brush just like I normally would. But still more was removed than just with the electric toothbrush. So what does this all mean? Brush, Gobi, which one? So obviously the Gobi toothbrush is a little bit less expensive than the Brush. It does have a few less features which honestly I didn't really miss. In terms of sensation for me, again, I've not really used a sonic type toothbrush. So for me, this was really ticklish and not 
too enjoyable to use, even on the gentle setting. Again, if you have used a Sonic Type toothbrush before, this probably is not going to be an issue for you. And then in terms of the disclosing solution, it seems like the Gobi did a better job around my attachments. So if I were to choose which one I'd have to use on a regular basis, I would probably choose the Gobi toothbrush for myself personally. But like I said, if you're more used to a Sonic type toothbrush, uh, you'll be fine with this. I really do like that both of these, the brush bristles are on the softer side. So yeah, I hope this review helped you guys kind of figure out which brush you would want to lean towards. Honestly, if there's anything you get from this message, it's not so much all the different modes or the type of brush bristle necessarily. It's more about your technique and the duration, making sure you're not missing spots. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching and take care of your teeth.